It's good to be here. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, I was asked to share my testimony, but Brother Paul said, five minutes. I said, okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm a kind of person that I like to talk a lot, so, but I'm going to control myself for sure. Uh, my name is Adib Ennabud. I was born and, uh, and raised in Lebanon, and I left uh, home when I was young because of war. And I left to Brazil, lived my life. And when you are young kids, 20 years old, and you are in Brazil, imagine what kind of life that you are living. No family, no friend, no language, no nothing. You've got to learn everything from zero just to try to establish your life. And when I was in Brazil, and uh, so I'm going to be short. I'm not going to go through what happened in Brazil in my life and what was through. But the only thing I want to share, it is uh, not my plan. It's his plan. This is a sharing testimony for the young people, especially if you are young and here in the, with this group that now you can maybe, maybe thinking, I have a plan in my life. I know what I am doing. I already designed it for myself. That's what you think, that this is your life. I already designed it, decided what I'm going to do in my life. When I was in Brazil, I was uh, 1994, I decided to come to the United States. And the Lord blessed me with a visa to come. I did not know why. I stood in line to try to get my visa, and I looked at everyone and said, rejected, rejected, rejected. When it came to my turn, and they said, for how long you're going? I said, I'm going for 21 days. They said, okay, come take your visa tomorrow. A plan that I was designing, I was so happy, so joyful going to the United States, try to escape all of this poverty, escape all of this, what I'm going to do in my life is a plan that I already designed it, decided what I am going to do. If I called in my cousin, they were living in California, and they told me, yes, great, coming to the United States, you're coming to California. And I said, no, I am not coming to California, I'm going to Miami. Why you're going to Miami, they were asking. And I said, because I heard you're Christian, and I do not want to follow the person that you are following. I am coming to the United States, the place of riches, the place of work, the place of money, and the fame, and things that I always dreamed about when I was young in Lebanon. And now I am coming to the United States to accomplish what I want. And I did actually decided that's my plan, what I designed. Young people, that was my plan from the beginning. And I arrived to Miami after so many things that happened, and I arrived, and I decided to call them that I am in the United States. And it was Christmas Day, 1994. December 25th, 1994, I called from Miami to my cousin, the same person. I said to them, I am Miami. He said, what are you doing in Miami? Looks like they were praying for some reason, and they asked me to come to California. And I actually, I don't know what happened. And I decided to uh, purchase my ticket, paid probably the most expensive ticket on that night, $900 to come from Miami to California, and I did. Changed completely. Arrived to California. On the same night, I am a kind of person that was so looking forward for the things that I want to do in my life and talking to them. They just said one thing on that evening, come with us to church. Young people invite others to church. And I said, no. I am not going. They said, what are you going to do in the house? You by yourself, come with us. And I said, I felt ashamed. I'm staying in their house. I, I felt, you know, what I'm going to do? And I did go with them. And we went, and there was a brother visiting from Sudan, Egyptian uh, brother serving in Sudan, still 
even remember his name, his name Alfred Mossad. And on that day, I walk in and they, I stayed outside. They said, come, out, come with us inside. I said, come in inside the church. I mean, this is my first day in the United States. The first day I arrived to the United States on that day from Miami to California, and I end up inside a church. And I heard the message for the first time in my life saying, the foolish says in his heart, there is no God. The foolish says in his heart, there is no God. That's what Psalm 14, and I look at it and I said to my cousin, what are you telling this guy about me? And my cousin looked at me and said, no, I didn't tell him anything. I don't know this pastor. I don't know anything. But here, let me open the gospel. Let me open Psalm 14 and I show you it's in here. My life was written in the word of God. My life was written in the Bible. My life was shown me who I am as a sinner. And I look at him, every word that he was sharing, it was speaking about me. Young people, old and young, your life is in the word of God. It is written from the beginning who you are. And that's who I am. On that day, he gave an invitation. And guess who gave his life to the Lord on that day? It was me. It was a person that raised my hand and I moved forward saying to the Lord, I want you in my life. I designed my plan. The Lord had a different plan for me. You may design your plan, but the Lord have a plan for you. But you need to come to him, asking him, What's you, what do you have for me? And the Lord will lead. Since that moment, the Lord changed my life, changed my direction, changed my heart, changed my walk, changed everything in my life. And he will do the same to you. So tonight could be your night. My story is long. I'm not going to bore you with it in a different time when you come to Pine Valley, maybe. <laughs> but this is who I am. The Lord has blessed me a lot. And tonight, maybe it will be your night. So open your heart for his word. Maybe the Lord will work in your heart, your heart tonight if you have not given your life. And if you have given your life and you still... You're still thinking it's your plan. Maybe the, the, tonight he will change your plan to his plan. And trust me, it will be completely different because there will be all blessing from him. Amen. What a wonderful time we've had this week. And how thankful we are that God has given each and every one of us the opportunity to be here. Don't take it for granted. Don't think that we're going to have these opportunities for the rest of our lives. It's important for us to, as was mentioned, to take advantage of the opportunity that God places in front of us. And I want to tell you, young person, older person, you are not here by mistake. So you maybe have come, you maybe have doubts, you may be wondering, well, I don't believe like everybody else. I don't think like everybody else. But God has purposed it, my friend, that you are here tonight. And let me tell you something. It was mentioned several times in the opening that we had that tonight is the last night. It is the last night of the conference. And for some people on this earth, it is their last night. Let that never be lost on you, my friend. Just a short walk from here, maybe half a mile, there stands some land. And in that land, are the bodies of people who experienced their last night. And if you were to walk through there, you would recognize some of the names. There's some of the names that we see around the campus. But what you see when you look at there, and the, the oldest 
tombstone that I saw was a, a young man passed about at the age of, in the mid-30s, 36, born in 1785. And as you, you walk through and you look to see who else is here? Who, what are the other bodies that had experienced their last night that are there? You can see written on the, the markers for the graves, those who love the Lord Jesus who belong to him. Some of them had verses. Some of them, I'll tell you my favorite ones. Simply the name, the year, and in the middle, with Jesus. Another one, until the resurrection. But yet there were others there. One, all you saw was the name and the year of birth and the year of death. Nothing else, not even the day. And I thought to myself, what must this person's life have been like? Was every day that difficult where I don't even want to remember that day of my birth? Young person, older one, young children, you are not here by mistake. Tonight is the last night. We're going to open the word of God and we're going to read a few verses together. But I want to remind us also of that which we've also received. Because it's important, young people, to look back and to remember what God has said. Yes, we've had gospel messages every night, but I dare say that even in the classes that you've had, and hopefully some of the conversations that you've had, have pointed to Jesus Christ as the Savior of men. Tonight is the last night of the conference. Brother Sammy opened. Brother Sammy and I sat in many a gospel meeting at the Eastern Bible Conference. We had our friends. He's a few years younger than me. But we had our little crew. And every year we look forward to all being together, to all hanging out, to all having fun. And I'll tell you, my friend, I look around and there are many who have walked away. So tonight, Brother Simon, two nights, has asked the young men to come forward. I'm not going to ask you to move. I want to trust that God is going to meet you right where you are in your seat, but not just for the young men. And I don't know why the ladies have been exempt this week. But you young ladies as well. That God has something to say to your heart. And he continues to speak day by day by day. And the question is, not only are we listening, but have we heard and how are we going to respond? Sunday night, and I'm going to try to do this from memory, but I wrote it down just in case. So Sunday night, we were in 1 Timothy chapter 1. And we read about the chief of sinners. Paul speaking about himself as the chief of sinners. Monday night, it was about the cross. That man on the cross. Wednesday night, I skipped Tuesday. See, I can't trust the brain. Tuesday, we heard the expression that this man receives sinners, Luke 15. Wednesday, it was, don't be left outside. You remember, God cast man out of the Garden of Eden. It says, so he drove out man. 
Sin had come in. He could not stay where he was. Thursday, Brother John said this. I'm not sure if we actually read the verse, but Ecclesiastes 12, remember your creator in the days of your youth. And we've talked about time and the the value of time and how time is fleeting. Sammy and I sat here with our friends and I said, some friends have walked away. Well, you know, a couple years ago, I went to the funeral of one of them. Sat here, conference after conference, gospel meeting after gospel meeting. And while we hope and trust that he had received the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, one of the most difficult things, my friend, is to go to a funeral for someone who you sat beside, someone who you knew, heard the message, but their life did not have anything for Christ. Young people, we have to be serious about where we are before the Lord. We say that being saved, getting saved, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior is the most important decision anyone can ever make in their life. Well, what about living for him? What about walking with him? You see, even even today, even tonight, we cannot be ignorant of the enemy's devices. He has no desire that you would hear or listen tonight. And so you have to, my friend, first, think about, not only, the message is only important because who is saying it? It's not Uncle Polly. That's my California name. And on the East Coast, I'm Brother Paul Palmer Jr. It's not because they're my words, my friend. God says, God says, and I must deal with and do with God. Let's turn to the scriptures. We're going to go to where we were. At the start of the conference, at the gospel meeting, 1 Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy, sorry, we're going to read chapter 2. It says... Verse 1, therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. And I'll just pause there for just one comment. In this day and age, ask ourselves, do we talk more about men? then pray for them. Do we talk more about men, brethren, others, instead of lifting them up before the Lord? God doesn't desire that we only be hearers of the word, but doers of it as well. Amen? Amen? So we got to think about these things, dearly beloved. And we have to remember that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, in the circles that we find ourselves, that there are others who are watching and listening and seeing what the believer does. And is my heart, is my mind, is my mouth pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ? Or am I pointing to just men here below? It says, 
verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. We had earlier on Sunday, we read about that faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. For this is good and acceptable, verse 3 of chapter 2, in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved. One of the speakers this week also referenced a verse we have in Acts 17. God commands all men everywhere now to repent. That I need to agree with God as to my sin. To the penalty of sin. What sin is. What sin has done. And say that I want to go a different direction. I'm not going to go the same way. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. There is our way and there is God's way. I can't get to heaven by myself. Brother Adib, you know, I had no idea what Brother Adib was going to come up and say. Thank God for the change that he made in his life. Thank God for the change that he made so that that man who wanted nothing to do with Jesus Christ is bringing up a family for God. He said, they showed me a verse, Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. I'll give you another verse. Proverbs 14, I think it's in the neighborhood of verse 8, verse 9, says, the fool mocks at sin. And so, my friend, there is a penalty that God has said that there is for sin. Your sins... We are born into sin. We have committed sins. And I can't get rid of that in my own strength, no matter what I do, no matter what, how much education I have, no matter what job I attain, no matter how much money I have in the bank, no matter how many conferences I go to. It's not about where you are sitting it's about who is in your heart. I was speaking with a young person today. He was talking to me about one of his siblings' friends. He said, Brother Paul, there is no other word to describe this person than a fool. There is no other word to describe this person. He's a fool. And I wonder how many tonight are sitting here and just hoping, I hope this guy is done soon. Because I'm tired of hearing the message. You know, we had a young man earlier in the week who gave his heart to the Lord Jesus. Heaven rejoice. We rejoice as well. You know, there was another gospel meeting. Everybody was filing out. And a young, a young person came back in. He said, I, I, I need to talk about something. 
you might say that you believe in the Lord Jesus, but your heart is somewhere else. You're not serious about your walk. You don't care about your talk. My friend, is tonight your last night? What will be said of your life? If you are sitting here tonight and you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, know this. As God has a desire that all men would repent, he desires that all men would be saved. And recognize that there is only one God. There is one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. He gave himself on that cross. On the cross of Calvary. Shed his precious blood. He died for you and for me. So that we might have a way. There is no other way. There is no other God. Don't get it mixed up, young people. Man is trying to change everything about what God has said. Will you stand on the word of God? Or will you stand on what man has said? And remember, the devil continues to go after you day after day after day. You take out your phone and you just am, uh, become absorbed in everything. More concerned about what God, man is saying than what God has said. Don't get mixed up, young people. There is one God one mediator between God and men. Scripture tells us that while we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. If you are without Jesus Christ, Recognize that there is no other way. There is no other name. There is no other possible way for you to be saved except through him. When we close the meeting and we ask for folks to, to depart, I'm gonna, going to challenge you in the, the prayer meeting earlier, it was mentioned that it was asked that the fear of man would be taken away. That you wouldn't look around and say, oh, what are they going to think if I stay in my seat? My friend, you have to stop being concerned about what Shirley and Tom think and be concerned about Jesus Christ. If you are struggling, if there is something in your path as a believer that you know should not be there, I'm going to challenge you also to stay behind. The week before the conference started, Thursday night, I was at a Bible camp in North Carolina. And after the message, everybody started to get up, started to leave, and you could just see this one young man, 14 years old, squirming, wondering, fighting. But he stayed. But he stayed. And, and as we talked together for a few minutes, Wanted to know first, was he a believer? Had he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior? He looked at me and said, yes, 
I was sitting over there last year in that seat, and that's where I accepted Christ. Praise God. But he said, but you know what? I'm not living the way that I should. 14 years old. And in his words, quote, unquote, my mind is constantly in the gutter. He, go, he lives in a Christian home. He goes to a Christian school. But he has now become the bully that used to pick on him years ago. He says he's disrespectful to his parents. And I wonder how many of us in here can identify with that. He's disrespectful to his parents. He just randomly punches people. And whenever he picks up his phone, he's looking at all things ungodly. 14 years old. But he knew that he needed to talk to somebody. He knew that that's not the way a Christian should be living. And he wanted to make a decision to not go his own way, but to walk with Jesus Christ. You might be sitting here and you've heard message after message after message. Jesus Christ died for you. He shed his precious blood. He went into death. He lives for us now. And he is knocking on the, your heart's door tonight. Your last night. Will you receive him as your personal savior? Will you be able to come up here years from now and give a testimony like Brother Adib? Will you be able to say, you know what? I'm sitting here this year, and I want to be an example of what the believer is in word and in deed. We're going to sing a song to close. I'm going to ask that after we're done singing, that you don't leave. You don't leave without Christ. Scripture says to not just repent, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. You will be saved. There is no question. Do you still doubt? You've tried it your way. Your way, my way, our way can never work. We must agree with God who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Man will try to change you and tell you that truth is something different. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. We're going to sing, O oh, come to the altar. And to close in prayer, I'm going to again ask that if you want to change your life. Have your life changed. If you want to yield your heart to turn over the reins of your life, 
stay where you are. Forget about everybody else. If it's the most important decision you'll ever make, treat it as such. Let's pray. Our blessed God and our Father, we thank you again that it is your desire that all men would be saved. You sent the Lord Jesus Christ for us. When we were so far away, when we had turned away, your love reached down to where we were so that we might know what it means to have new life. Father, we pray for any in this room who might be on their way to hell. That they would, this night, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we pray for those who have been on the pathway, for those who are not walking, following after their Lord, We pray for conviction of heart that they would also speak to someone tonight, even for just prayer, so that they might be found following the Lord Jesus more closely. We thank you for every night that you've spoken to our hearts together. We pray for the message, not just on our hearts, but on our lips as we would depart. We pray that it would bring you honor and glory. And we would give you thanks for all that you've done. As we thank you again for the Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. And I ask that we leave quietly. I know that it's loud. I know everybody hears every little thing. But let's do our best. And young people, if you know that you have a friend who should be staying, you can encourage them and stay with them if that will help. We're dismissed.